This is Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us today for Live with Annie. As usual, we've started the stream a bit early. This helps us get everything set up and broadcasting properly to our various platforms. You can find a countdown clock on the screen showing how long it will be until we actually go live. While you wait, please connect with us and other viewers in the chat. Let us know where you are from and whether you're a new or longtime viewer. We'll see you live soon! Again for joining us for Live with Annie. We are so happy to have you with us today. While you wait for the program to start, we hope you'll enjoy the content playing on screen. There's so much inspiration, so take a moment to tell us what you love in the chat. Don't forget there is a countdown clock on the screen so you know how long until we go live.
It's Annie again reminding you that we'll be going live with this week's episode shortly. There is a countdown clock on the screen showing how much time is left. You've got just enough time to grab some water or a beverage of your choice and a snack and to connect with us in the chat. We'd love to hear what you've been working on this week. to remind you that we'll be starting this week's live very shortly. We've got a really fun episode planned for today, and we'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thanks so much for joining us for episode number 38 of season two of Live with Annie. If you are ever confused about what needle to use or wondering what all those numbers on your needle package mean, you are going to love today's presentation. The amazing Rhonda Pierce of Schmetz Needles will join us soon to share how this little piece of steel can solve some very big problems, including broken threads, skipped stitches, and puckered fabrics. We are especially happy to see you all here today as we had a bit of a scare a little while ago when Jake couldn't get our live stream up and running. It turns out that the updated version of the software that we used to coordinate it everything wasn't up to the task. So Casey and Jake had to go back to the previous version until the software company gets the bugs worked out. 
Vimeo is aware of the problem and was very apologetic. They said their engineers are working on it, so hopefully we'll be able to take advantage of the updates soon. Unfortunately, Jake had spent most of the day building the assets for today's live in the new version, that was yesterday, and he didn't have time to redo all that work. So our presentation will be a bit more bare bones today without as many images and graphics. Please send Jake some thumbs up and hearts to let him know how much you appreciate his efforts. If you enjoy these efforts, <laughs> let's say that again. If you enjoy these episodes, please also take a minute to follow us wherever you are watching. And if you know someone who you think might enjoy the information that we share, we'd really love it if you'd tell them about Live with Annie. The easiest way to do that is to just tag them while you're watching, because that will take them directly to the episode so they can watch it too. If tagging is new to you, just type the at symbol followed by the name they use on the platform where you're tagging them from. Their name and picture will pop up so you can make sure you've got the right person. If you do, click on it, type a comment if you'd like, and submit it. Also, don't forget, we really love reading your comments, so please be sure to interact with us throughout this presentation. Tell us what you think about what we're showing, share your tips and tricks, and tell us what projects you're working on. We want to know what you think and really love learning from you, too. Be sure to add any questions you might have in the comments or chat, and we will do our best to answer them before we close. Last week, we celebrated the back-to-school season and shared a mini-truck show of projects for students of all ages, from small projects such as pencil bags and notebook covers to larger fab projects such as backpacks and computer carriers. If you missed that episode or want to watch it again, remember that you can find all the previous 90 episodes of Live with Annie on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or at byannie.com. We will put up all the links to make them easy for you to find. I'm going to have one quick drink before we move on to today's program. So today we are really excited to welcome a very special guest to Live with Andy, Annie. Rhonda Pierce, who is Vice President of EuroNotions and Spokesperson for Schmetz Needles North America. I first met Rhonda several years ago at So Expo in Puyallup, Washington, and I have loved catching up with her at shows around the country. Her warm personality and contagious smile definitely light up the room. Rhonda says she has a dream job, teaching, teaching sewing enthusiasts about the most important two-inch piece of steel in the sewing machine, the Schmetz needle. During Rhonda's classes, students respond with aha moments and giggles as they learn needle facts. Until 2020, Rhonda enjoyed sharing her needle knowledge in classrooms and showing sh so Boy, my mouth is not working today. And sewing shows throughout North America as she traveled with the Schmetz Super Needle, which is 17 inches tall. I have troubles with S's. That's what I've decided, and there's too many S's in all those sentences. Since the pandemic, she's been traveling virtually, and last year she gave 100 Schmetz virtual. <laughs> I'm going to say the wrong word here really quick. I'll have to tell you a funny story about that later. Anyway, she gave 100 virtual presentations to stores and guilds in addition to monthly Facebook Lives for Schmetz needles. She likes to ask, what's your favorite Schmetz needle? Rhonda says she's delighted with the ingenuity and remarkable creations that sewing enthusiasts share. She publishes the Constant Contact 7-Year All-Star Winner Schmetz newsletter and publish the inspirational e-zine Schmetz Inspired to Sew. Rhonda is a certified Fit Nice System instructor, earned a Brendan Burchard High Performance Certificate, and last had a quilt hang during three international quilt festivals. Rhonda's personal blog documenting sewing and quilt projects is sewmorestitches.com, so be sure to check that out. 
With Quilt Shop and wholesale distributor management experience, Rhonda delivers a new, unique perspective as Vice President of Euronotions and spokesperson for SchmetzNeedles.com North America. So please help me welcome Rhonda Pierce. <laughs> Hi, Annie. <laughs> I hope you do better saying Schmetz than I do. That's that's a hard word. <laughs> it is a very, it's an, and it's a hard word for me to say also, so don't feel bad. <laughs> I, my tongue was just going all the way around itself. I'm so glad to see you, and thank you so much for joining us today. Tell us where you're joining what? us from. Well, I'm in my office here in the Chicago area where Wow, we've just celebrated like 90 degree weather and tomorrow it's going to be 60 degrees. So fall wow. is coming and I'm ready. <laughs> wow. Yeah, me too. I'm looking forward to 60 degrees here. We've actually hit 60s at night, which is nice because in the summer it's usually 100 still at night. So that's been nice. Well, rather than us try to talk back and forth and talk over each other, I think I'm just going to turn this program over to you and let you take it away. Okay, well thanks Annie and hello everyone. I'm delighted to be here today and as Annie said, I'm here in the, the Chicago area in my conference room. So let's go ahead and get started. My talk today will be about 45 minutes, and it's broken into three different sections. First, I'm gonna talk about the physical needle, um, the Smets color chart, and how to read the, uh, the little Smets pack. Then I'll be looking for any questions you might have, so go ahead and add those um, into the chat. Then I'll talk about specific needles for piecing and quilting, sewing with knits, etc. And then I have a mystery question. And I bet it's a question that you've asked yourself many times. So let's go ahead and, and get started. So Annie mentioned that I was traveling with my Smet Super Demo Needle. And now I'm just traveling virtually with it. It is 17 inches tall, anatomically correct, and 11 times the size our regular Smets home sewing machine needle. So I first want to start of, um, to talk about the physical needle. Why? Because when you're aware of the parts of the needle and their function, it helps you make an informed decision as to what needle type and size to use. So let's get started. Now my needle is on a little wooden base, but I think you can still see virtually that the top of your needle has a beveled edge. A beveled edge, and that's referred to as the butt of the needle. And you might think, oh, so what, a beveled edge. <laughs> well, stop and think about it. When you go to insert a needle into your needle holder, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. So the top of the needle is beveled for easier insertion into your needle holder. Our home sewing machines require a flat shank needle. A flat shank needle, again, for perfect positioning into your needle holder. We have a little transitional area referred to as the shoulder of the needle. And I hope you've noticed that your Smets needles have either one or two bands of color. And we'll talk about those color bands shortly. We have the length of the needle, which is referred to of the blade of the needle. And here's what I want you to pay attention to. Smets being the German, a uh, German company actually measures this area here of the blade to come up with the sizes that we're familiar with. Sizes 70, 80, 90, et cetera. So using millimeters, they measured this area here of the blade and they'll get a measurement like 0 0.70, 0 0.80, et cetera. They take that measurement times 100 to come up with the sizes that we uh, are familiar with. Sizes 70, 80, 90, et cetera. So now that helps you understand needle sizes. So a, um, a size 70 needle is going to be smaller than a size 90 needle. Again, the needle size is based on an actual measurement. So I hope I've removed some of the mystery about your, your Smets needle. 
Okay, now on the front of your blade, how many of you have noticed the groove of the needle? You can actually see and feel the groove on your little two inch piece of steel. But what's the purpose of the groove? The groove is going to cradle your thread so it moves evenly and smoothly down the length of the needle to, your, to the eye. Your thread should not be flip-flopping back and forth. No, you want it to move evenly and smoothly down the length of the needle to the eye so you get a nice clean stitch. We have the point and the tip, and these change according to different needle types. And on the back side of your needle, how many of you have noticed this little indentation above the eye? This is referred to as the scarf of the needle. And the scarf has a very important function. When your needle passes through your fabric and your throat plate, the bobbin hook has to come up and catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. So the bobbin hook needs passing room. And the scarf width, depth, and length will change according to different needle types. So now I want to show you a few slides just um, that'll probably be easier for you to um, see. So Jake, if you can lo load up that first slide, I sure would appreciate it. Um, the slide that shows the needle anatomy. And um, so just as we've already talked about, we've got the parts of the needle, the butt, the shank, the shoulder, the blade, the groove, the point, the tip, and I haven't mentioned the eye yet. On the next slide that's coming up, I consider the eye to be one of the most important features to your Smets needle, the eye. On this um, picture here, you can see that our universal needle, the workhorse of all needle types, the eye is 40% the width of the blade. But look at the eye of the embroidery needle, and you can see that the eye is wider. And when you look at the eye of the top stitch and the metallic needles, you can see the, the eye is not only wider, but also elongated. So when you're sewing, what does a larger eye mean to you? A larger eye means there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So if you have problems with threads that are breaking or shredding, what do you do? Well, you need to change your needle and you may need to move up a needle size or change to a different needle type that has a larger eye. So again, I hope I've solved a little sewing situation that we sometimes um, encounter. Now, on the next slide, I want to make sure that you're comfortable with the Smets color chart. Smets came out with two color bands on the, our home sewing machine needles in 2014. So you can kind of uh, date some of your older needles. But now let's look at this chart and I want to make sure you're comfortable reading it. On the left hand side of this chart, the column is labeled needle type. And you'll see many of the different Smets needle types have a color assigned. Now look at the right-hand column of the chart, and that column is labeled needle size. And each needle size is assigned a color. Now look at the needle between the two columns, and you see the two bands of color. So the top color band identifies the needle type, while the lower color band identifies the needle size. So on this sample here, what needle type and size do we have? Well, the top color band is yellow, so we look off to the left under needle type and we find yellow is stretch. On our needle, that lower color band is rose, so we look off to the right under needle size and we find rose is size 7511. Um, so this is a stretch size 7511. But let me just walk you through a couple other um, examples. My favorite go-to needle for all kinds of sewing, piecing, and quilting is a Microtex size 8012. So what would the two color bands be? So we look off to the left under needle type and we look down and find Microtex. Microtex is purple. 
And we look off to the right under needle size for size 8012 is orange. So Microtech size 8012 has a top color band of purple and a lower color band of orange. One more example would be, what if I have two bands of orange? What needle type and size would that be? Well, we look off to the left under needle type and we find orange is a jersey needle. And we look off to the right and again, we find orange is size 8012. So two bands of orange is a jersey size 8012 needle. Now there's one more thing I need to point out about the Smets color chart. Look under needle type and the very first needle listed is universal, but there's no color. In fact, the box is actually X'd out. So what does that mean? Universal needles have only one band of color and that's to identify your needle size. So if you have a universal size 8012 needle, well, you have just a single band of orange. If you have a universal size 9014, you have just a single band of blue. So I hope this helps you identify your needles, especially after you've taken them out of your, your needle pack. And speaking of the needle pack, let's move to the next slide. I want to make sure you're comfortable reading all of the information on that little plastic chip. So currently, at the bottom of your Smets needle pack, you find the needle size. So on this sample here, we have assorted sizes. And I think most everyone recognizes needle sizes. So on this pack here, we have sizes 7010, 8012, and 9014. This is a sorted sizes um, pack. But how many of you have looked at that number above the needle size and wondered, what the heck does 13705H mean? <laughs> To the next slide, we will find that 13705H is the needle system. Think of the needle system as a model number. 13705 means that the needle has a flat shank. And the H translates from the German word that means scarf, that little indentation on the backside of your needle uh, above the eye. <clears throat> So needle system 13705H is a flat shank needle with a scarf that 99% of all of our home sewing machines um, require. So that number has always been a mystery. So I hope that helps you out. On to the next slide, we find the needle type spelled out. So these are universal needles. Above that, you find the Smets name. And to the next slide, we find the um, the um, the color codes. And because this is a universal needle, there's only one band of color on each universal needle. So the two needles on the left hand side have green bands, green for size 7010. The next two needles to the right have orange bands for size 8012. And the next band to the far right has that single band of blue for universal size 9014. So lots of information here. But let's look at one more slide of our um, needle pack. This one looks just a little bit different. So again, at the bottom of this needle pack, you find the needle size. So this is size 9014. Above that, you've got the needle system 13705H. So we know that this is a flat shank needle with a scarf for our home sewing machine. But look at that needle system line just a little bit closer because you find an additional letter. On this sample here, there's a dash E, E for embroidery. On some of your other needle packs, you might find a J for jeans or M for microtex or Q for quilting, etc. So lots of information on your needle system line. Above that is your needle type. So these are embroidery needles. Above that, even still today, you'll still see, sometimes still see the, the, um, the German word for needle. You've got the Smets name above that and 
Because of the clear packaging above the Smets name, you can see the color codes. So on this pack here, the top color band is red on each needle, red for embroidery. And on the lower color band, we have blue, blue for size 9014. So I hope I've removed some of the mystery about all those numbers and letters <laughs> on your Smets needle pack. And if you stop and think about it, that information, actually, it's really quite redundant. Lots of information there for you. Okay, so next slide, and then we'll move to, um, to me, and I'll just talk for a little bit. So I can't see any um, comments here. So Annie, are there any comments right now about um, the eyes or needle parts or the color chart or how to read the needle pack? I'm down to look here. I think if the, not, I will. I think the questions that are on here so far you haven't gotten to yet. So we'll hold off on those okay. for a minute. Okay. So oh, I'll wait a minute. Guess I'm wait a minute. There's oh. some more on here. Let's see. What is the 13708H used for, or is the 13705H used for sergers? Uh, sometimes, yes. So about serger needles, um, many sergers will use a different needle system. That is ELX705CF, CF for chrome finish. So what does ELX705 mean? And how is that different than our regular home sewing machine needle? ELX705 is a flat shank needle. And yes, it has this front groove, just like our home sewing machine needle. But needle system ELX705 actually has a second groove right here on the back side of the needle. And for some of your surgery uh, stitches, you need that ELX705. So how do you know if your um, surgery requires ELX705? Well, what you can do is open up that front cover and oftentimes you'll find a sticky label or an imprint that will tell you what needle system to use. Now, my uh, serger says use ELX705CF, but I know from my dealer and from my surging friends that I can also use a regular home sewing machine needle, needle system 13705H. So if I'm working on a project, I might actually use a regular home sewing machine needle. But when I start to have problems and my stitch quality is not what I um, expect, then what do I do? Oh, well, I do what the manufacturer suggests and I will use that ELX705 and that will um, elevate the quality of my stitches. So yeah, you need to talk to your dealer um, you, you, um, to find out uh, what needle system you can use in your, um, your, your serger. So good, good question. So let me just scoot along and talk about specific needles now. And let me just ask, what do you think the most popular needle type is? And I would guess that most of you would guess um, correctly. The most popular needle type is the Smets Universal Needle. The Universal Needle is the workhorse of all needle types. Why? Well, it has a slightly rounded point and it works well with both woven and with knit fabrics. The Universal Needle is also available in the widest range of sizes from size 60 slash eight, the smallest size, all the way up to a size 125, the largest size. Plus universal needles are available in twin and triple needles too. The most popular needle is universal size 8012, followed by universal size 9014. So I always suggest that you have those needles in your stash. But today I want to talk about um, some other needles too, because with Smets you have options. So five needles um, that are popular for piecing and for quilting. And guess what? Universal is right there. Lots of famous quilters use the universal needle for piecing and for quilting. 
But let's look at some other options. We've got the jeans needle. The jeans needle, also known as a denim needle. Does that surprise you? Well, how many of you like to make denim quilts? Or how many of you like to make flannel quilts or those heavy duty raggy quilts? Well, you need a hardy needle and the jeans needle is up to the task. So what's so special about the jeans needle? The jeans needle has a reinforced blade a reinforced blade so that when your needle passes through your heavier, denser fabrics, there's less needle deflection, less movement of the needle when the stitch is created. So you'll get a cleaner stitch with this reinforced blade. So the jeans needle is a great needle choice when you're working with denims, uh, flannel quilts or those heavy duty raggy quilts. And here in the Chicago area, yeah, fall is just a, a day or two uh, um, away and soon we'll have winter winds and snow. <laughs> so I know a lot of people will be making uh, raggy quilts. Okay, another popular needle type uh, for piecing and quilting is the top stitch needle. And as we learned earlier, the top stitch needle has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. The top stitch needle also has a slightly rounded point. And we've got this needle here, just as the name suggests, is the quilting needle. This needle was specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. What's so special about it? Well, it has a special taper, a special tapered po uh, point specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. So the quilting needle comes in two sizes. So you probably use the smaller size 7511 for the piecing of your project and the larger size 9014 for the quilting of your project. The quilting needle has a special taper. And that leaves one needle. And um, I'm not presenting these in any specific order. This one just happens to be my favorite needle. And that is the Microtex needle. And the generic name for a Microtex needle is a sharp needle, a sharp needle. So what's that mean? The Microtex needle has a very slim acute point, very slim acute point. So with the Microtex needle, you're going to get the most precise stitches. And because the Microtex has this very slim, acute point, guess what? The Microtex needle is going to dull quicker than any of your other needle types. So you will need to replace your Microtex more frequently than any of your other needle types. Now, there's one other thing I want to mention about the Microtex. And how many of you like to sew or piece or quilt with batik fabrics? Batiks, I love batiks, um, batik fabrics. Even if you pre-wash your batik fabrics, oftentimes there's still some dye residue or the, um, the weave is still rather tight. So the Microtex can really penetrate through uh, your batik fabrics beautifully. So again, the Microtex is a great needle choice when you're sewing with batiks. Okay, so if you're taking notes here today, let me just do a quick review. We have five needle types popular for piecing and quilting. We've got the workhorse of all needle types. Sizes uh, 80, 12, and 90, 14 should be in everybody's stash. So five needle types. We've got the universal needle. We've got the jeans needle for your denim quilts, your flannel quilts, and those heavy duty rag quilts. It's got that reinforced blade. We have the top stitch needle, which has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. We have the quilting needle, which specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. You'd probably use the size 7511 for the piecing of your project and the larger size 9014 for the quilting of your project. And last but not least is Microtex. The generic name is a sharp needle for Microtex. 
the Microtex has that very slim, acute point, so you're going to get really clean, precise stitches. And because it has that very slim, acute point, you're going to have to replace your Microtex needle more frequently than any other needle type. And the Microtex is a great needle choice when sewing um, on batiks. Now, all of these needles you can find at your local quilt shop or fabric store. These are all available um, as single single pack. So go into your local store and you can find these, um, the, these needles. Okay, so that was piecing and quilting. I want to talk about a few more needles um, before I um, move into the next section. So how many of you like to sew with knits? Or how many of you would like to sew with knits but you're a little bit intimidated? <laughs> Well, let me tell you, when I first started sewing with knits, I learned on, on double polyester. And let me just tell you, knits have come a long way since double polyester days. And I love to sew with knits. But part of the success of sewing with knits is using the proper needle. So there are two needle types you must have in your stash when you're sewing with knits. And the first is the jersey needle. The jersey needle. The generic name for a jersey needle is a ballpoint needle. The jersey needle has a medium ballpoint. The other needle that you need in your stash when sewing with knits is a stretch needle. And guess what? The stretch needle also has a medium ballpoint. But when compared to the jersey needle, the stretch needle has a narrower eye and a deeper scarf. So now your needle, your thread, your machine and fabric are all going to play just a little bit differently. So if you're sewing on knits, well, how do you know? Do you use a jersey or do you use a stretch fabric? Well, there's a rule of thumb that works 80% of the time. If your knit fabric has lycra, spandex, or elastic, use the stretch needle. If it's just a regular knit fabric, use the jersey needle. Sometimes stretch and jersey are interchangeable, but not always. So again, the rule of thumb is if your fabric has lycra, spandex, or elastic, use the stretch needle. If it's just a regular knit fabric, use the jersey needle. So it wasn't so long ago that I made a cotton t-shirt that had 3% lycra. So what needle did I use? Yeah, I used the stretch needle. And guess what? That one time I didn't like my stitch quality. I've made lots of cotton t-shirts with lycra or spandex. And I've always used the stretch needle. But this one time it, I didn't like the stitch quality. So what did I do? Well, I tried another stretch needle. Same thing. So then I thought, okay, let me just try a jersey needle. And guess what? I got the um, stitch quality that I expected. So again, sometimes stretch and jersey are interchangeable, but not always. Now, there's one more thing I want to mention about um, the stretch needle. How many of you like to sew with cuddle fabric or minky? You know, if it was cold here um, in the Chicago area right now, I'd probably be wearing um, a cuddle vest or maybe a little cuddle jacket that I'd made. I love to sew with cuddle. And I know sometimes people get kind of intimidated by cuddle, but you know what? You need to pin it uh, well and you need to use the appropriate needle. And yes, this little two inch piece of steel is going to make a world of difference in how your um, sewing is done. You want to use a stretch size 9014. So even Shannon Fabrics that manufactures minky and cuddle fabrics suggests or recommends Smith's stretch size 9014. So if you haven't tried minky or cuddle fabric, give it a try. You're going to want to pin well and you're going to want to use uh, Smith's stretch size 9014. So stretch and jersey needles, where are you going to find them? Yeah, go to your local sewing machine dealer. You can find all of your needles um, right there um, as individual packs. 
Now, there's one other needle type that I want to talk about today. And this one was introduced right before the pandemic. So if you haven't seen or if you haven't used or don't know about this needle yet, don't worry about it. That's why I'm here today is to help keep you informed and hopefully remove some questions you might have about your Smets needles. So the newest needle to the Smets line is the Smets um, super nonstick needle, super nonstick needle. So I think even virtually you can see that these needles are a different color. They're kind of a gunmetal color or charcoal gray, and that is the stick resistant finish. Now, I can't use that T word that we're all familiar with. We find it on our pots and pans in the kitchen. I can't use that T word, but it's the same thing. <laughs> the same finish that resists um, the stickiness on our needles. But this needle has um, two other um, uh, features that I need to bring to your attention. This needle also has a reinforced blade. A reinforced blade, just like that jeans needle. A reinforced blade so that when your stitch is created, there's less needle deflection, less movement of the needle. So you get a cleaner stitch. This super non-stick needle also has an extra large eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So when are you going to use these fabulous super non-stick needles? Well, how many of you like to do machine embroidery or machine applique? And when you're doing those two techniques, frequently you're working with a stabilizer that what happens when you're stitching so fast? Yeah, the stabilizer gets warm and then it has a tendency to gum up your needle. So the super nonstick will resist the stabilizers from sticking to your needle. If you like to sew on oil cloth or splash fabric or vinyl, this is a great needle choice. When you're sewing on vinyl, what happens? The vinyl gets warm and then the vinyl has a tendency to hug your needle and then you can't see where you're sewing. <laughs> so the super nonstick will resist the vinyl from hugging your needle. And there's one other product that um, you can use this needle for, and that's your hoop and loop tape um, or Velcro. Hoop and loop tape, it's kind of an odd fabrication, right? It's fuzzy on one side, sticky on the other, and kind of crispy in between. Doesn't that sound like a candy bar? <laughs> I could use a snack right now. Uh, anyway, hoop and loop tape and Velcro. The super nonstick can stitch beautifully through your Velcro and your hoop and loop tape. So give it a try. So hoop and loop tape. Yep. I mean, um, your super nonstick needles come in four sizes, sizes 70, 80, 90, and 100. And you can find these at your sewing machine dealer and at some of your quilt shops. So give these um, a try. Awesome, awesome needle. So we have just covered a lot of needles. So Annie, any questions I can um, answer before about needles that I can answer before we move forward? I think so. Uh, you have not yet talked about chrome or titanium. Are you going to cover that later? Oh, I'll, I'll answer that right now. So um, for many, many decades, Smets needles have had um, a nickel finish, a nickel finish. That was um, um, just our standard needle. In 2017, we introduced Smets Chrome needles, Smets Chrome, as a high-performance needle. At that time, we only introduced eight needle types in selected best-selling um, sizes. What's so special about Chrome? Chrome resists heat and wear. And with Chrome, you can get a longer stitch um, experience. So Chrome, uh, when the needle penetrates your fabric, there's less resistance. And with um, Smets Chrome, there's less resistance also as the thread is passing through the eye of the needle. So great features to Chrome that really was embraced by our sewing and quilting um, public. So um, Smets Chrome became very popular. 
so popular that, in fact, last year, Smets converted all of the needles from, from a nickel finish to chrome. So if you've bought Smets needles in the last year, year and a half, um, you've, you, you're probably already using chrome. Um, the, the packaging has not yet changed. You're probably going to see the packaging of your Smets needles change in the next few months or I'll say next year just to be um, safe. So if you've bought Smets needles with just the, the regular packaging like, like you see here, uh, in the last year or so, you've, you're already bought chrome, you're already using um, chrome needles. So good question. Now the other question um, is about titanium. And currently there's only one um, needle type that is available in titanium um, from Smets. And that is our Smets Gold needle uh, for embroidery. Smets Gold. And you can see even virtually that this needle um, has a gold finish to it, and that is titanium. Titanium helps to keep the needle cool, and um, the point's still going to get dull, but you can probably get a little bit more um, stitching time out of your, um, your needles. So you've got choices, chrome, chrome or the, the titanium. What I have found over the years is sometimes our machines have um, personality. So it's good to have a variety of needle types and sizes um, on hand. And I'm delighted that um, Chrome has been um, such a big hit with our, our sewing public. So yeah, good question. Jake says I'm not on what? yet. So oh, if, I can hear you now. Okay, all right. So the next question is, what is the best needle for top stitching on vinyl for a handbag? Is there a super non-stick top stitch needle? Um, no, but you know what? The, your needle of choice is this one right here, the super non-stick needle. Because when you're sewing on vinyl, um, you need, it's nice to have this uh, reinforced blade. Plus the um, the non-stick surface of the needle, so your vinyl does not hug your needle while you're sewing. So you can actually see where you're you're sewing. So if you're making vinyl handbags, vinyl tote bags, etc., the super non-stick is a great needle choice to to use. And again, there's four sizes that are available: 70, 80, 90, and 100. So anytime you're working with vinyl, use the super non-stick needle. Okay, so so you don't have one specifically called a vinyl needle. It's the nonstick needle. Well, we do have. Oh, let me see if I can get it real quick. I got it right here. We do have a specialty pack of needles called vinyl. Let me see here. And oh, I got it right here. Okay, um, these you're gonna. Find, you can find at some of your quilt shops, some of your um, sewing machine dealers. I have a combo pack right here called Vinyl Needles. Let me see if I can show it without the glare. Vinyl Needles. Um, and this, these are um, project-specific needles, but what are they? They're super non-stick needles. This is the only assorted needle size pack for super nonstick needles. So in this pack here, you've got sizes 70, 80, 90, and 100, opposed to buying uh, the single size cards that you can find um, at your local sewing machine dealer. So vinyl needles and the super nonstick are the very same needle just a different name this is assorted sizes so i'm i'm glad you asked that question yeah that's a good question then the other question was what needle do you recommend for cork when you sew oh, on cork? For cork yeah for cork i would choose either the um whoops what did i do here i would choose the vinyl the super nonstick or um, I would also try a Microtex needle. Sometimes you just have to um, experiment with different needle types and sizes, but between the uh, super nonstick and the Microtex, one of those two needles will work um, with your cork, absolutely. 
Are you going to talk about um, double needles and triple needles and wing needles? Those were, people had questions about a few of those. Oh, really? Okay, well, that wasn't really in my plan today, but I can, um, I can um, certainly address that real quick. So, um, twin needles. Uh, let me find it here in my little booklet here. Twin needles. You're going to have two like needles on a single shank. So here's a picture. Or for triple needles, you're going to have three like needles on a single shank. And the little uh, bar that you see, the little bar that I can't quite point to, will be either blue or red. That's called the, ne the needle bar. So two like needles on a single shank. And um, so when you use a twin needle or a triple needle, you're going to have three like stitches um, on parallel stitches on, on the top of your fabric. And then underneath, you're going to, if you're using a twin needle, you're going to have a single row of zigzag. If you're using the triple needle, you're going on the back side of your stitches, you're going to have two parallel lines of uh, zigzag. So twin and triple needles can be used for utility purposes and certainly for embellishing. The exception to the um, twin needle of having two like needles on a single <laughs> shank would be a hem stitch needle. A hem stitch needle, and let me just see. Oh, guess what? I do have one rather handy here. Um, a hem stitch needle is also known as a wing needle. And let me see. Here's what the package looks like. And you can see that that needle is one big, super wide needle, right? <laughs> That's why it's called a, a wing needle. I don't, yeah. So it's super wide. It's a regular needle, but it's got two wings on the side. The hem stitcher wing needle is most frequently associated with um, heirloom sewing. But you know what? Every once in a while, I will see um, a hem stitch used in multimedia quilts. So if you like to make art quilts or multimedia quilts, you might give that um, a try. Now, because the hem stitch needle is so wide, um, the double hem stitch needle actually, mm -hmm, there we go. Can you see that? There's such a, there you go. Okay, the hem stitch needle is so wide that you wouldn't be able to get two hem stitch needles through your throat plate. So there's a hem stitch with a universal needle on the uh, double hem stitch needle. Again, frequently used for heirloom sewing, but wow, every once in a while you'll see it in multimedia or art quilt. So um, give, give it a try. Now, when you're using the hem stitch, um, or um, also known as a wing needle, you need to make sure that your throat plate is wide enough to accommodate not only the width of the needle, but the width of your stitch, because if not, guess what? You're gonna be breaking a bunch of needles. <laughs> So learned good that. question. I learned that lesson. I bought a double needle and didn't realize that there was a difference in sizes and broke it right away. And, and those aren't really cheap needles. So that was a, no, I won't forget that never. ever again. So <laughs> there was one question where somebody said they had a double needle break right at the T-joint. And she wondered whether that was due to like a manufacturing defect or, or if, maybe if that's user error. error. Do well, we do we do monitor uh, uh, complaints, and I'm not aware of any um, uh, manufacturing faults. Okay. So it happens sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. One other question was: Does starching the fabric for piecing um, affect what needle you use? Oh, I wouldn't think so. I'm not a starch person, but if Microtex is your favorite, it's still going to work beautifully with your 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 starch. So I wouldn't let starch like unless you've over starched it. I can't yeah. see that that would be a problem. Mm -hmm. 
And, and then someone also asked, um, what needle do you recommend for bag making? Do you recommend um, a Microtex or? Well, it, again, it depends on your fabrication. So a Microtex could be a possibility, a jeans needle, especially if you're working with something really dense, that jeans needle has that reinforced blade. If your bag has that vinyl or netting, that super nonstick would be really great. Here's the deal. There is no p needle police. <laughs> and and there really are no hard and fast rules. Now stop and think about it. Many decades ago, we really didn't have the wide range of fabrics that we have now. Basically, you know, and maybe it wasn't even that long ago that we had basic cotton. And then you had double polyester. So, you know, you, we didn't have that many different types of needles to use. But now you've got a wide range of fabrics and now the needles are changing with the fabric. So sometimes you just have to experiment. Um, and again, sometimes our machines have personalities. So what works for you may not work um, uh, for your, your best friend. So yeah, these are all really good questions. You know what, what my most frequently asked question is? And I'm going to move on to the next slide. And I can answer more questions at the end, too. The next slide is, how long does a needle last? How long does a needle last? Well, here's the easy answer. <laughs> they do not last forever. As the next slide shows, I've got some really super nasty needles. Your needles should never, ever look like these. That needle on the left-hand side looks like it has twin mountain peaks. That needle on the far right, wow, looks like a cutting blade. So what are these needles gonna do to your fabric? Yeah, they're just gonna eat up your fabric. So that is not a good thing. On to the next slide, please. Yep, changing the needle is a simple, inexpensive repair that you can do yourself. How do you do that? Well, there's just a little screw or there might be a little lever that you move up or down to um, change out the needle. So don't be afraid to change out the needle. Next slide. This slide here is one of my favorites because this is the same needle point and tip in each slide. This needle has been used and ab abused. The needle on the left hand side with our naked eye looks sharp, right? But as you look um, in each frame moving to the, to the right, it's been magnified increasingly and you can see how dull that needle really is. Look how dull it is. It's got that super lip and look at all those burrs and striations on the, the point and the tip. So what's this needle gonna do to your fabric? Yeah, it's just gonna eat up your fabric. So that is not a good thing. Next slide. So you really need to change out your needle. Yes, they get dull with use. And next slide. So the, um, okay, you can go, go back to me now. <laughs> So don't be afraid to change out your needle. So how long does a needle last? I don't know. Maybe it's three seconds if you hit a pin right away. <laughs> when you hit a pin, you might think, oh my gosh, I'm, I just bent the, the needle blade. And it's true, maybe you did. But I guarantee if you just hit a pin, you've compromised the point and the tip of your needle. Now you've got burrs and striations and maybe it's actually very dull now. So what's what do you do? Change out the needle. Maybe you can get 20 hours of sewing time. Um, maybe you're not a very aggressive sewer. Maybe you're working on really fine or loosely woven fabric. So your needle's not getting um, dull as quickly. So people like to average out the sewing time to six to eight hours of time. But I really think you should reframe the question from how long does a needle last? Because quite frankly, Years ago, I actually tried to time myself <laughs> with a needle. How long does a needle last? It's impossible to time yourself because of all the interruptions and then you forget to check your time. So six to eight hours is just an average. 
So I think what you really need to do is reframe the question to what are the clues to changing the needle when you're sewing? So we kind of touched upon one clue to changing your needle, and that is when your thread is breaking or shredding. What do you do? Change the needle. What you may not know is that if you're not changing your needle frequently enough, the thread will actually wear a groove in the eye of the needle. And that's not a good thing. A groove in the eye of the needle is going to shred and break your thread. So what do you do? Change the needle. What's another clue to changing the needle? Well, what's happening to your fabrics? Are they puckering? Are they snagging? Um, are you leaving a giant hole in your fabric? Or in a really bad case scenario, the needle is actually tucking the fabric into the throat plate. Well, hello, that's a clue. What are you going to do? Change the needle. And what's happening to your stitches? What's your stitch quality? Are your stitches skipping? Are your seams uneven? Or maybe you're sitting at your machine and you're, and you're saying, well, Rhonda, I'm sewing in a straight line. How can my stitches look kind of wiggly squiggly? Well, guess what? Your needle is dull. So what do you need to do? Just change out the needle. And there's one other clue that you need to be aware of. It's shocking that people don't figure this out. But you've got lots of company. And that's why I'm here today, to help keep you informed. What else is happening when your needle is dull? Well, hopefully when you're sewing, you're in that wonderful bubble, right? You are just humming along. And then you start to hear that little click, click, clicking sound. What is it? Well, it's your needle and it's saying, hey, I'm dull. I'm getting dull here. You've used me. Uh, get ready to change me. If you ignore that clicking sound, now what's it doing? It's going pop, pop, pop. Now it's yelling at you. Change me. Change me. I've worked pretty darn hard here on all these stitches. It's time to change me. I'm worn out. And if you ignore the clicking and the popping, what's happening now? Now you hear that clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> and I bet if I could see our audience here today, I would see some giggling. I would hear some giggling because there's always people who are guilty. And that's okay. I, that's why I'm here today. So when your machine is going clunk, 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 your needle is begging you to change the needle. So I'm not here today to just sell you more needles, but I really, really want you to have a wonderful sewing experience. And that includes changing the needle. When you stop and think about it, you've spent a lot of money on your machine, right? You spent a lot of money curating your fabric stash. You spent a lot of money on your beautiful threads. And what about all those books and patterns and retreats and lectures that you've gone to? Yep, that's a lot of money spent. <laughs> and um, let's not forget your time. Your sewing time is an investment. So huge investment, lots of different ways. So you need to maintain that investment right down to the hardest working two inch piece of steel in your sewing machine, which by the way, is the least expensive part to your machine, the Smet sewing machine needle. You need to have a little stash of needles so that when you're sewing at one or two o'clock in the morning and you start to hear that little clicking sound or the popping sound or your, um, your stitches are looking a little bit wonky, what do you do? You just need to change the, the needle. So easy and expensive um, solution. Now, I want to also just add that in the real world, we oftentimes juggle projects. So maybe you're making um, a bag for a friend, and now you, um, you need to make an emergency gift for somebody else. So now you need to change out your needle. Well, what do you do with that needle that was originally in your machine? 
Well, you set it off to the side, right? And you're going to remember that it's um, still sewing worthy, right? <laughs> well, there's a little um, trick here for you, a little tip for you. When you come back to that original needle, you can take the needle to determine if it's still sewing worthy. You can run it across your fingernail. And if it leaves a scratch on your nail, guess what? You've got a burr and you need to toss that needle. If you've got a pair of old hose, and let me just tell you, after the pandemic, I am never wearing hose again. So take a pair of jersey fabric or a pair of old hose, run the needle across your fabric, and if it snags, you know you have a burr. So just toss that needle. If that needle is still sewing worthy, um, you can organize your slightly used needles in the Grab It My Pad. The Grab It My Pad. Many of you are familiar with the Grabit magnetic pin cushions. I love that product so much. I went back to the company. I said, you got to buy that company. And guess what? They did. <laughs> and one of the Grabit products they had is the Grabit MyPad. And last year, I uh, updated this. So now all of the different Smets needles are on here. It's updated with the different Smets color codes. And there is a cell for each needle um, size among each needle type. This is um, an extra thick uh, piece of felt um, for your slightly used needles. And it also comes with a little flower head pin. So if you've got some older Smets needles that don't have the color coding and they're still sewing worthy, guess what? When you take that needle out of your needle package and into your machine, now you can remember what it is by just sliding this flower head pin into the appropriate needle type and size. So you can find this Grab It My Pad um, at your local sewing machine dealer, quilt shop, etc. So just happy to um, point that, that out. Um, the other two Grab It products that I'll just quickly mention that you can find at your local quilt shop and sewing machine dealers are the Bob and Saber Squares. The blue is brand new. The Bobbin Saver Square is available in red and now also in blue. And you can find that at your local store. And for those of you that have um, machines that require jumbo bobbins, well, there's the jumbo bobbins a saver square and you can see that these channels are deeper and wider to accommodate your jumbo um, bobbins. Whew. So we have just covered <laughs> a lot of information here. Now I've got just a couple more slides because I see we're running out of time. If we can start those slides again. So how do you know what needle to use? Well, there is a free app. You can currently you can go to the iStore or Google Play, just type in Smets, S-C-H-M-E-T-Z, and you can download the free app. On the next slide, you can see uh, one of my favorite sections. There is a section called needle by needles by fabric type. So you can click a fabric and it'll suggest what needle type and size to use. This is an Android shot. And I'll tell you, the app is probably over six years old now, and we are currently updating it. So it's going to look different um, probably in the next six to eight weeks. Uh, yeah, really, six to eight weeks or maybe even before. So stay tuned to the updated um, free Smets app. And um, all of the images that I've shown you here today, you will find in the app. Um, to me, one of the most important images is um, that picture of the eyes of the needle so you don't have to um, remember. So next slide. My name is Rhonda Pierce. I represent Smets Home Sewing Machine Needles in North America. I do have a personal blog at SewMoreStitches.com. I'm not selling anything, but I do document my sewing projects and my travels. So if you click 2020 sewing or 2021 or 2022 sewing, you can see uh, what I'm working on. A couple weeks ago, I was in Madison, Wisconsin at the Great Wisconsin Quilt Show. So I've started to uh, post a few of those pictures. Plus, I'm working on a fantastic Shannon um, Fabrics coat. 
And you can go back to, to me now. I think this was the last um, slide. So um, you can go, I have three posts uh, about my Shannon coat. It's um, a very full with an oversized uh, hood. And I look forward to uh, finishing that coat in the, ne the next few weeks. So we've covered a lot of information. Um, you can go to your local uh, quilt shop, sewing machine dealer, and you can find the ABC pocket guide. If you buy your Smets needles there, chances are your dealer will have this free little ABC pocket guide. All the images that I show you today are in this guide. And actually, you might think of the Smets ABC pocket guide as the Bible to everything you need to know about your Smets needle, including um, how to read the needle pack. Do you remember what 13705H means? Yeah, that's a flat shank needle with a scarf for our home sewing machines. Then we photographed all of the different Smets needle types so you know what sizes, what the specialty features are of the needle, et cetera. At the bottom of page six is the beginning um, of a little needle a fabric reference just like in that app and then I would be remiss if I didn't um, also point out clues to change the needle there's a nice picture here of a super doll needle on page 37 and of course you've got um, the Smith's color chart so we have just covered a lot of information. I realize that needles aren't sexy they're not romantic and they're not glamorous but hello, you just can't sew without your Smets needle. So I want to say thank you to everyone that is here today. Um, you can follow Smets Needles on Facebook. You can go to SmetsNeedles.com. Be sure to uh, sign up for my monthly newsletter because to our subscribers, my newsletter subscribers, I offer a special, a holiday special, which we'll probably be offering uh, in the next few weeks or so that we will not put on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or anywhere else. So it's a thank you to our subscribers. So you'll want to check that that out. So, Annie, we've just carried, uh, we've just followed, a, uh, we've just talked about a lot of information. Are you overloaded? <laughs> you know, I learned so much today, and I have to confess that I'm one of those people who used to only change my needle when it broke. So um, I really appreciated that you covered that because I definitely have learned to listen to that. But the tip about running it on my fingernail or a pair of nylons, that is really helpful because I take needles out and sometimes I just stick them in my pin cushion thinking, oh, I'll go check and see that or I'll remember that. And so that's, I'm going to get rid of a lot of those because I'm sure a lot of them are no longer good. So thank you yeah. so much. Well, I I'll also want, to, go ahead. Go ahead. I also want to say thank you, thank you for the color coding on them because that is really a helpful thing that, that doesn't exist on other needles and it really helps when you're trying to figure out what kind of needle it is. So absolutely nobody can read the size that's on the, the shank. So <laughs> I never even knew there were sizes on the shank until somebody said, oh, yeah, they can read them. And I was sitting here looking because that was one of the questions that came in. And maybe we should hit a few more of those. But she said, you know, what how what are the numbers on the shank? And I was sitting here trying to I don't even see them. Do you put the numbers right, on right. still since they're color coded or are they gone? Yeah. So here's what I suggest you do. Um, if you have needles that are not color coded, you know what? Take your smartphone and take a picture of the shank of your needle. And then you can expand that picture so you can just barely read <laughs> the That's size. So it'll tip. say Smets, size 70, 10, 80, 12, whatever. That is a really, good, really good tip. So yeah, thank you. The other question that I know came in was, so there's two numbers on the size, 80, 12. And you said the 80 is 100 times the number of millimeters. What's the 12? OK, so Smets is not the only needle manufacturer in the world, right? There are other needle companies out there. And they use a sizing system that's referred to as the International Asian or Singer Sizing System. So many, many decades ago, the needle manufacturers got together and said, hey, let's standardize our sizing. So a size 80 will always equal a size 12, or a 14 will always equal a size um, 90. 
So when your books and patterns say, oh, use a size 12 needle, well, you know what? Now you know, hey, that's, that's a size 80. That's an 80-12 needle. So again, it's just two different um, sizing systems that mean the same thing. <laughs> Got it. But the SMET, is, the SMET size is actually based on the measurement of, of the blade. That's a good tip. Good question. The, the other question that came in is, what's the trick to opening the package? <laughs> yes. Well, a few years ago, uh, SMETs changed the the little adhesive on the package. And yeah, it wasn't too easy to um, open. Your, and they have since changed it uh, back to an appropriate adhesive. So to open the package, you're going to put your thumb on the, the, uh, the bottom third, the bottom half of your package, press down and slide, slide, slide. Sometimes it requires a little bit more energy, um, but you're going to slide your package down. And my, my fingers are a little bit hot right now just with all the lights here, but um, it should slide down. So the good news is um, you're not alone if you had a problem. <laughs> We heard about those issues, and so um, that was communicated back to the Smets engineers, and they did change the adhesive on the package. So uh, hopefully that um, issue was going away. That's a great one. Let me just look real quick and see if there's any more um, questions before I let you go that we didn't get to. So we talked about, let's see. What about industrial needles? Are you sell industrial needles as well? That's a whole different ball game, I assume. Yeah, you know what? We um, Smets is known also for their industrial commercial needles, um, but I focus and our office focuses on home sewing machine needles. Now, I will say that there are long arm machines and they use industrial needles or they use a different needle system. Long arm machines that we sometimes find in our homes will use a specific um, needle system. And examples would be a 206X13 or a 134R or 135X17, etc. So those needle systems are not interchangeable. Like with our home sewing machine, needle system 13705, which is a flat shank needle with a scarf, doesn't matter what the brand of the machine, our home sewing machine is, that flat shank needle is going to work in 99% of our home sewing machines. But the same is not true for long arm machines. When you buy your long arm machine, you must find out what needle system to use. If you do not have your owner's manual, then you need to go online and Google your specific manufacturer and model number. And for some reason, the machine companies really bury the needle system information. So sometimes you find it midway, like how to change the needle. Sometimes the needle system is found in the troubleshooting area. So if you don't find it right away, you know what? Dig for it. You do not have to pay for that information. I know there are machine manuals out online that you can pay for, but you can find that information for free. And better yet, go to your local dealer. That's what they're for. They want to help you. They want you to have a great um, stitching experience. So um, support your local dealer. That's really, really good advice on so many things. Another question was, can needles be sharpened? which in my <laughs> opinion is probably no. <laughs> no, no, I know that there are needle sharpeners out there, but here's the deal. I think you'll be shocked at how much time and technique goes into making a needle. There are 32 steps that go into making a Smets needle. Along the way, there are over 70 quality control steps. And it takes, oh, okay. And some of the steps would be um, uh, um, applying a master dye to the, the steel in order to create the eye of the needle. 
the groove is milled the sides of the needle are finished and then the needles go into high heat ovens and then they go into uh, freezing uh, temperatures for tempering so that is a 12-week process to make a smets needle and I was fortunate enough in 2012 to actually visit the Smets factory in Germany while production was still there to see. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let me take pictures. <laughs> but um, yeah, it takes 12 weeks to make a needle. And then at the end of the manufacturing process, uh, there are individuals, um, technicians, at uh, in a black room with black lights and they will take about a thousand needles at a time and they'll do one last manual check for any irregularities um, that uh, on the needle so 12 weeks so can a needle be um, sharpened no no when you sharpen the needle you are compromising the point and the tip the needle is a engineered tool. Actually, the same ratio of uh, the needle is the same ratio to build a high rise or a skyscraper. <laughs> so it's really shocking that there's so much engineering that goes into the tool. And when you consider that your needle, you're, you're spending, um, you know, five bucks, less than 10 bucks on a pack of five needles, just change the needle. It's not worth compromising your fabrics and your threads by trying to um, sharpen. So true, so true, such good advice. All right, I see just two more questions and I, I'm gonna go ahead and cover them because I wanna make sure people get the information. What needle is best for applique? My machine likes to skip stitches, especially if I go through multiple layers. Okay, for applique, you've got choices. If you're working with a sticky stabilizer, I would, su I would um, suggest you try the super nonstick needle. If you don't want to use the super nonstick, try the Microtex needle with that super, um, that very slim acute point. So sometimes you just have to try. And what works for you today uh, may not work next time if you change out your thread or maybe you're working with a different um, fabric. So sometimes you have to be flexible. And are you guys available, like if somebody is having real problems or can they email you and say, here's what I've tried, what do I do now? You know what, um, on the first Wednesday of every month, I do a Facebook Live and I've started to take questions uh, people can post questions like the day before, and I will answer those questions live. It's kind of hard to answer questions live because they're scrolling through so quickly. So now I've started to ask for questions in advance. So yes, I'm happy to help. That's great. Because here's, so here's... That's Facebook, Smets Needles, all one word. So go in and like it. And um, we post almost every day and uh, with needle facts and then fun things, especially on the weekends. And we have a new program called the Smets um, Shoutout. So if you've completed a quilt or a, one of Annie's bags or a project, you know what? We want to see it. Go to SmetsNeedles.com and um, download your pick and tell us about your project. Tell us what uh, any by any uh, pattern you use, and uh, we'll have a monthly drawing starting um, in a couple weeks. So that's the Smets shout out. That's fabulous. That's really great. So the last question that came in was a question where someone had all kinds of troubles. She changed her needle, different sizes. She changed the bobbin. She changed the bobbin case. She tried different types of threads. She slowed down the speed. Mm -hmm. um, she was wondering what else to do. She was working with light batiks, fabrics, a layer of insularity, I don't know what that is, and a layer of warm and natural. I would imagine that when you start combining all those different things, she just needs to try one of those different needles, maybe a Microtex. Yeah, I would try um, the super nonstick needle, and gosh, if you're going through, or uh, even a jeans needle, you might consider a jeans needle because of that reinforced blade, and Microtex, so three choices for you, see what works. And you've gone through quite a few different um, changes. Um, I would also ask when's the last time you had your machine serviced? 
So some of us are really hard on ma our machines. We might kind of push or pull our fabric underneath the um, uh, the foot or, or the throat plate. And you know that kind of sometimes can throw off the timing of your machine. So uh, again, if you haven't had your machine in at least um, annually, I would take it in to be serviced. Maybe timing's an issue too. That is, a, that is a really good point because there are so many things that affect it. A lot of times we can solve it with something little like a needle, but sometimes it is more than that. So thank you so much, Rhonda, for being with us today. You shared so much helpful information. Um, I definitely have new respect for this little piece of steel, and I really <laughs> appreciate that you took the time. You're a great teacher, and I look forward to seeing you soon in Houston. So safe travels, safe times until we see you again. Okay, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. And uh, so smets. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right. I hope you all really enjoyed um, Rhonda's presentation. She is so much fun, and um, she's really excellent at sharing the information um, that, she, that she knows. Um, we're going to move on now to our local quilt shop um, feature. We're, we've um, kind of run out of time. I was going to talk about some of the projects that we use for um, storing needles, but we'll cover that another time. Just mostly remember our little... Um, by any needle case and pin cushion, it's a great place to put your needles. Let's go on all the way down to the local quilt shop contest. Uh, not contest, but feature. So again, as you all know, one of our um, favorite events every year is our local quilt shop contest. Um, we celebrate that in February, and during that contest, we ask people to vote for their favorite local quilt shop and share a little bit about what makes them special. And so to continue that fun throughout the year, each week we highlight a store and share some of the voter submissions during Live with Annie. So this week we are visiting two different shops um, in the U.S., both of whom have um, by Annie trunk shows on display. We are going to start in Simpsonville, South Carolina at Marietta's Quilt and Sew. This store offers a wide variety of the finest 100% cotton fabrics, along with a large selection of sewing, embroidery, and quilting supplies. They also offer fun educational opportunities that will appeal to sewers of all styles and skill levels, taught by experienced instructors in a baby lock friendly, no pressure atmosphere. In conjunction with their By Annie trunk show, the shop has scheduled several By Annie classes, including Clam Up, Cosmetic Clutches, Pack It In 2.0, and Project Bags 2.0. So be sure to visit their website and their Facebook page to get more details if you're interested in classes on any of those. Marietta's Quilt and Sew is a certified baby lock and Janome dealer, and they also offer a full line of sewing, embroidery, and serger machines, long arm quilting services, and on site machine service and repair. Customers who voted in this year's local quilt shop contest raved about the store's friendly, knowledgeable staff and their great selection of fabrics. And Pam said, Marietta and her staff are so friendly and helpful. There is always a great selection of fabrics and projects. Best shop around. When asked what Marietta's quilt and sew makes it so special, Kathy had a long list. The variety of, variety of classes that are offered, charity work to the community, employees who are considerate and so helpful to all levels of quilters, great fabric selection, one day a week is donated to Quilters for Quilt Club. We can sew till 8 p.m. Quilts of Valor support and one day a month shop allows us to sew. Has been known to no donate both fabric and long, long arm quilting at no cost for Quilts of Valor. So the store is participating in the All Carolina Shop Hop, which will run until October 30th. They will also have their Biani trunk show on display from September 18th to October 18th. So be sure to stop in and check it out and tell them that Annie sent you. Next, we're going to travel to the plains of Kansas to visit a store with a modern feel in an old fashioned setting. Prairie Flower Crafts in Alden, Kansas. 
This small community in the center of Kansas is celebrating their 150 year anniversary this year, and Prairie Flower Crafts is celebrating their 52nd birthday. Since they couldn't celebrate number 50 due to the pandemic, they decided to just celebrate with the city this year. And owner Paula Royer tells me that Prairie Flower Crafts was founded in 1970 by Sarah Fair Sleeper. Sarah saw an opportunity to fill a need that the quilters of the community had for fabric for the backs of their quilts, as well as a larger place to gather and work. Sarah, being the business lady that she was, bought the building and after a little renovation started the store. She also carried other craft and quilt supplies along with wicker baskets and furniture. Over the years, the store has seen many changes. Now it is primarily a fabric and quilt shop that offers gift items as well. In 2013, at the age of 96, Sarah decided to retire and sell the store to Paula, a local businesswoman who had also worked at the store for the previous 10 years. Since Paula's purchase, many changes have been made in the appearance of the store, while keeping the traditional feel of the vintage storefront with pressed tin ceilings and plank floors. In addition to new lighting for better viewing of fabrics, Paula has added more fabric displays, a centrally located checkout, and lots of classes for beginners as well as seasoned quilters. Currently, there are over 5,000 bolts of fabric and a plentiful supply of notions, patterns, and books. I was especially impressed that a store in a community whose population was just 120 in the last census garnered 111 votes in this year's contest. It's obvious that it is a destination shop for quilters in the area. Voters in this year's shop complimented the store's helpful, friendly staff, their great selection, and their historic homey atmosphere. John wrote, aside from the wonderful owner and helpful staff, this is a fun shop with a great selection housed in the coolest of old storefronts. Alden is a must-see in old, small Kansas town of a bygone era. Joanne said, it's about the only business in a very small town in Kansas in Kansas, but they have a great selection of fabrics and carry a lot of Biani products, which I can't find even in Wichita. And Karen shared, everyone knows me and is eager to help no matter the need. The shop is located in interconnected buildings with creaky wood floors. I just love the feeling when I walk in through the front screen door and see all the colorful fabrics and notions and quilt displays. And Mary said, it's a really fun shop with down-to-earth staff. They have a variety of fabrics, notions, and projects, but best of all is the welcoming atmosphere. Joyce summed it all up, saying, Prairie Flower is a treasure on the plains of Kansas. I have to say, this shop sounds like a really great excuse for a road trip, so be sure to check them out. They will be participating in the Central Kansas Quilt Shop Hop from October to 6th to the 15th, and their Biani Trunk Show will be on display in the store from September 24th to October 14th. We wish both Paula and Prairie Flower Crafts and the City of Alden a very happy birthday and many, many more. So we want to thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We went a little over time, so uh, thank you for being with us. We will be back next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with a really inspiring episode of Live with Annie. We are going to be joined by guests Jennifer and Carolyn Gibbons, who were the inspiration be behind our popular bosom buddy pattern. We're going to be talking to them about breast cancer and other hereditary cancers and ways that we as quilters and sewists can help those who are dealing with those diseases. They have so much good information to share, so be sure to join us then. And until then, happy stitching. <music>